Welcome home, horror fans. My name's Adam. And I'm Zoe. And today you're watching the 10 biggest twists in the Saw franchise. And there are a lot of twists in the Saw franchise. There really are, aren't they? There was no shortage of what we could put in this. Place. That's right. This was we, actually harder than we uh, thought it was going to be. I think we narrowed down about 20 yeah, in total. Yes, yes. So it was a bit hard to cut from. Yes. Uh, but I think we managed to do it pretty well. That's right. And uh, if you know anything about Saw, you know it is full of twists. And these are the 10 biggest ones out of the whole 10 movies. Call them Hello Zep moments, if you will. That's right. So number 10 we have. At number 10, we have Daniel is in the safe from Saw 2. Tell me where he is. He's in a safe place. Daniel's in the safe the whole time. <laughs> this was a huge twist coming from Saw 2, which is full of twists, mind you. Yeah. This one... One of my personal favorites, Daniel being in the safe. You really love this I one. I love this one. I think what makes this one so great is there's so many nods to that being the case exactly. throughout the film. Yeah. So that when it finally does happen, you're like, oh my God. <laughs> they really did tell you this at the start of the movie. Um, and, and I think that this is a prime example of taking what Jigsaw says literally. Literally, yeah. Literally. He, he he alludes to this pretty heavily. He specifically says that Daniel's in a safe place. He's in a safe place. Uh, not an accident. It is in the commentary that he was actually supposed to mention Daniel being in a safe more, and they cut it out. They I'm thought, pretty sure there much. was one scene that where they were supposed to say, uh, he's safe and secure. Or you'll find your son in a safe and secure state. You will find your son in a safe and secure state. And it's like, oh, jigsaw, 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 jigsaw. He's so psychotic. He's a trickster. He's he a, is. He's a he trickster. Is. I love the fact that he was in the safe the whole time. You couldn't have seen this coming. An amazing twist. And obviously, this is just the one that's kicking us off. Mm -hmm. uh, moving to number nine. At number nine, we have Perez is still alive from Saw 6. You led me to believe that she was dead and you want to work with me? Perez is still alive. This is one that blows over rather quickly. Yes. Um, I feel like she's not given enough time in this scene to really uh, go through the impact that this has on everything. Um, I love it. I personally think it's great. I, I hate that they kill her off in the same film, but I think that the reveal is awesome. You can really see in Hoffman's face that he's like, oh crap, what am I going to do from here? Detective Hoffman? Perez. The scene is played so well when she's revealed to be alive. Just the look on Hoffman's face. Perez. Perez. Yeah. Um, so good. And it's and you could watch that scene back so many times and it's just a beautiful moment. And as fans too, you don't see it coming either. No, because you know? it's so sudden. Yeah. It really is so sudden. Exactly. He walks into the precinct and there she is. Yeah. There she is. <laughs> you don't even have time to compute. Like, yeah, hang on like, a minute. Holy Perez. Did she die? <laughs> yes, exactly. And there's a big scene, of course, that's uh, much earlier uh, to do with her death of Storm sitting in her hospital room and, and blood being on the pillow and everything like that, and then sort of mourning her, which I get confused all the time. But that's <laughs> the, the, them talking about Perez's death and everything. It was so cool to see her come back. Obviously, it's annoying that they killed her off so quickly. Yeah. Hashtag justice for Perez. Um, but a great twist. And we really would have loved to have seen more Perez. I definitely would have let's, loved to see more Perez. Nice. Let's vote for Perez in Saw 11. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, if she can come back for one of the prequels, so good. So, so good. We love Perez. And, uh, and yeah, look, at the end of the day, underutilized, of course, but a great death, though. What a great scene. For she, sure, she yeah. Got I mean, it's the same thing with Strom's death. If you've got to die, at least it's at least in one it of good. the best and most iconic scenes in the entire franchise. Exactly. So, uh, can't be mad at it. Wish exactly. they hadn't have killed her off in the same film, but Perez's being still alive is definitely one of the best twists, I would say. In the Absolutely. Uh, and number eight, we have It's Not William Easton's Family from Saw 6. What are you doing here? Wow. This is a great twist. Another one from Saw 6. So yes. I feel like Saw 6 definitely has a few twists and turns throughout it. <laughs> and I think that this one is played out so, so well. Like having William Easton on the phone to his sister at the start, but you just think it's he's standing up some girl. Turns yes. out to be his sister who was in the cage the whole time. And that's his actual family. Uh, very, have, very interesting. You couldn't have thing. seen this one coming. No. This is This is a twist that was so well played off in the film that there's just no way of guessing mm -hmm. who that those family members were. Yeah. And 100% you think that they're obviously somebody he cares about. Mm -hmm. But instead, they're people that want to kill him. Uh, it was so well played out. Couldn't have seen it coming. And look, Saw 6 is not necessarily... It's a bit of a polarizing movie. You know, some of us love it a lot and some people 
think it's a, you know one of the more average ones. We think it's great. We love Saw yeah, Six. Yeah, we love Saw Six. Uh, but this this twist, and there, like I said, a few twists in Saw Six. This twist is just one that just sort of came out of nowhere, and of course, end in William Eason's uh, untimely death. He's the man that killed my dad. It definitely does, and I think that having Pamela Jenkins play the sister is really quite interesting. Mm. Um, Mostly because of Hoffman and her's interaction at the start of the film. You really do just think he's trying to give her a front row seat into the traps because he, he tells her um, to stop reporting false <laughs> false stuff and everything like that. Uh, so having her be there, it's almost like, oh, well, he's given her an opportunity to get a real front row seat to, to these traps and to what goes down in them. And then being revealed that it's actually William Easton's family member is pretty insane. Yeah, this, this whole sort of ending towards uh, Source 6's ending, it's kind of really hard to piece together Pamela Jenkins and and obviously the other two family members and sort of how it's all working together and then when it's a nice big reveal at the end of how it's all played out. We are out. grateful for the the going back and showing us the flashbacks yeah. and how they <laughs> they all intertwine <laughs> together. I definitely do love the Hello Zep moments that sum it all up on a silver planner for us. Yes. For it, sure. The reveal was played off really well, really well edited and just like a perfect ending to Saw 6 as well. Yeah. Um, so what do we got at number 7? At number 7 we have Hoffman is the new apprentice from Saw 4. Hoffman makes his debut in Saw 3. He's in a very brief scene at the start of the film where he plays this detective that's sort of at the scene of the crime of Troy's demise, um, but just acts a little shady. He's not shown throughout the rest of the film. His next appearance is at the start of Saw 4, uh, where he is in the autopsy room of John, listening back to the tape. That should have been the first sign that... <laughs> <laughs> he was in on it. He's <laughs> always just time. a little bit shady, old Hoffman. Yeah, for sure. You can um, sort of see it coming. Nonetheless, it doesn't make the scene any less uh, interesting. Impactful, yeah. Impactful. It was a hugely interesting scene. Absolutely fantastic yeah. well played, especially by Acostas Mandalore once yeah. again. An amazing performance. He just looks so menacing staring down at uh, Rig on the floor there and just the way he walks away. Classic cool bad guy departure. Yeah. Um, phenomenal scene. We always look forward to it when we're watching Saw 4. We love this one. So, uh, you know, and, uh, any reveal of a new apprentice is always like a great twist as well. 100%. I couldn't agree can. more. Um, and that brings us to number six. At number six, we have the glass coffin was always safe saw five have you learned to trust me the only way to survive this room is by entering the glass box before you another fantastic twist <laughs> this is I, i'm sure everyone who watches our videos regularly knows that this is one of our favorite scenes ever yes the the way this twist plays out specifically just the fact that when hoffman gets in there and he's doing his all like oh, oh, oh and like he's all <laughs> playing scared and everything like that it's so funny and it's so great to watch every time. It's played off so well. And then, of course, the big reveal all of a sudden when Strom starts to realize that, oh, shit, I'm fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Which is it, another thing where you should be taking Jigsaw's words, or in this case, Hoffman's words, at face value and um, taking them literally. Because the same thing happens at the start of the film where Strom doesn't listen to the tape, ends up in an unbeatable trap, which he does win. But you would have thought that at this point, Strom would be like, huh, maybe I'll listen to the tape this time. <laughs> He doesn't. He ends up being squished in the room. A lot of people like to argue that maybe Strom getting in the glass box would have ended in his death anyway. I completely disagree with that. I think Hoffman went in the room with a needle to sedate Strom. Yeah, you think that Hoffman had bigger plans for Strom. There was always a bigger plan for Strom yeah. other than just him dying and uh, it's sad really this twist was such a, a fantastic twist but unfortunately it was played out on one of our favorite characters it was twisted onto Strom, and and he was the it would have been that, really uh, amazing to see what the plan was yeah it really would have been maybe um in a sore what if one day <laughs> yes yeah but you know look the way the twist played out the fact that obviously that Strom didn't get into the coffin and instead we watched we get to watch hoffman just lay back and really enjoy Strom's death i mean He's watching on as Strom gets crushed and he's enjoying it way too much. He is enjoying it way too much. Yeah, it's great. Such a great twist, such a great scene. We love it. We love it so much, but we're not going to talk about it all day. We're going to move on to number five. And at number five, we have Amanda was in it all along in Saw 2. It is I who will carry on John's work after he dies. Danger! This one, this one is a, this is a huge twist. Like, obviously, the reveal, when I first watched Saw 2, 
I didn't guess it. I've got to say, I did not see it coming. I thought it was quite interesting that she would get tested again. It is Stockholm Syndrome, right? I mean, look, <laughs> let's not get into John and Amanda's relationship because that's a whole nother video. <laughs> but this twist, of course, her actually being in on this game the entire time. Look, I don't know if you saw it coming, but I didn't see it coming. And this is like a big deal. All of a sudden you realize like, hang on a minute. She's just there orchestrating this thing, you yeah. know, and... Look, how could you have seen it coming? It's a big deal, and it's so cool. Like, it's one of these really great twists at the end. Um, Saw 2 is full of twists, and this is certainly one of the biggest ones. I saw Saw 2 at a very young age, Um, so I can't really remember whether Amanda being in on it had a massive impact on me or not. Watching the movies again now, being older and being able to understand them more and not just be watching them for the senseless gore, um, I do think that it is an amazing twist and I think that it's one that probably no one saw coming when first watching the film. Um, I think that she's amazing in the film and I think that it makes the rewatch of Saw 2 so much better when you see at the end that she's in it. You want to go back and see her orchestrating the whole thing in the background. I think that the twist plays out amazingly and I have no complaints with it whatsoever. Ever. Yeah, it's it's such a great twist. And I mean, it, it's the beginning, obviously, of Apprentices being sort of introduced to, to the whole storyline. Yep, the first uh, one. Yeah, well, the, the first, first one that we see. The first big reveal of an apprentice. So it sets a precedent that effectively, you know, we just keep getting more and more apprentices after that after that point. And uh, yeah, up until the reveal of this, you just I just wouldn't have seen it coming. No. And it's so iconic and such a big deal. Uh, we definitely have to touch on this twist. Uh, very, very cool. Very, very big one. So, uh, number four. Number four, we have the game was pre-recorded from Saw 2. It's not live. Carrie, we're in the wrong fucking house. Another Saw 2 twist. Yeah, it's just full of them, isn't it? Saw 2 is just all about twists. It certainly is. The pre-recording of the game, uh, this was huge. Oh, yeah, a, a massive moment. It's one of those ones that when you think of really, really amazing sort of twists, this is probably one of the first that comes to mind. Yeah. I think when people see it the first time, it is such a surprise. And you sort of are, are wondering what's going on when Eric is being led to another location and then and then Rig leads the SWAT team out to a location where they found that the footage is being recorded. But you know Eric's walking through the right house and they're in different locations and it's just like, what is going on? on and then when the reveal is there you're like oh oh, 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 oh." eric's in trouble yeah this uh this is this is definitely i think everyone loves this twist the pre-recording uh is so smart and it is obviously why saw 2 is one of the better movies because it's just one of the biggest twists around there and it being a sequel to saw 1 which had obviously you know a lot of twists in there like it was so cool to be able to follow up saw 1 with a movie that was just all of twists mm-hmm. and really had you guessing. And the pre-recording was just huge. Mm-hmm. Now, if you've seen Speed before, um, you know, the old Keanu Reeves on a bus, there are a few things here that are very similar, the, the leading to the wrong house and the pre-recording stuff. So it sort of plays akin to that a little bit, uh, but a beautiful twist. And mm-hmm. I really, really enjoyed this one. So it's a huge one to place on the list. And we're in the really, we're in the top end of this list now. So this is a pretty competitive uh, spot to be in and easily deserves a place. Uh, Definitely. Up in the top spots Definitely. for sure. Which brings us to, of course, the, the top three. The top three. Yeah, and we'll start you off with number three, of course. We have Jeff kills Jigsaw and his wife from Saw 3. This is an absolutely massive moment in the It franchise. is a massive moment. Um, for all the Jeff haters out there, <laughs> Jeff is iconic. We love Jeff here. Uh, Jeff does not get enough credit uh jeff murdered jigsaw he ended it all he didn't end it all he thought he was ending it all um and in turn unfortunately killed his wife lynn as well which what a scene what a scene this is obviously a very important scene and whether you love or hate jeff which it seems like most people hate jeff you know uh but at the end of the day this is obviously this is the death of jigsaw and it's a big moment because in the same moment obviously amanda dies and a lot happens 
And it's such a big twist. Again, this one's played on Jeff because he didn't see the fact that his wife's head was going to explode as part of the mm-hmm. death. So poor old Jeff, he got tricked again. The thing I love so much about this scene is not only is it like, oh, you killed me, now your wife's dead, but also you're never going to see your daughter again. Like it's just, just more, it just elevates more and more and more and further and further and further and it just shows how depraved Jigsaw this is. is. A, look, this is why I like Jeff. You know, for all you guys who hate Jeff out there, we know you think he's slow motherfucker Jeff. That's fine. But think about this, all right? Just put yourself in Jeff's shoes. Your son was killed, okay? And then you're tasked with saving all the people who killed your son, which is not a fun place to be in. And then everyone hates on you for being too slow to save the people who killed your son, What is insane. And then you try to save your wife by killing the person who's put her in this horrible position. And then by doing that, you kill your own wife. <laughs> and then by killing him and killing your own wife, you find out your, your daughter is being captured. And you know what? You will never be able to find her either. It just never and ends. And then he gets shot by his And then, and then so. the moment after all that happens, he gets shot and killed by a police officer. It's not, <laughs> there's nothing good. Okay. Jeff's probably in the worst, like has the worst. He has the worst test. time of anyone. <laughs> the entire he doesn't time. Have, this is horrible. People do not give Jeff enough credit. No. Like, I, <laughs> out of anyone's position to be in, it would not be Jeff. You don't want to go through Jeff. that. I mean, it's bad enough just have like, one close, and that you can see the start of Saw Three. The death of his son, it ta- it tears him up inside. Yeah. His his life is ruined by the death of his son. He's sitting there and he just can't. He just can't operate. He's yeah. he's really stuff. And then it just gets his life just gets worse. <laughs> and just worse, and worse, and worse and worse and worse. Worse and worse and worse. You know, don't complain that he was too slow saving people who murdered his son. The guy just had a bad run of it. All right. Yeah. And it was just one thing after another. And this twist, the fact that he was finally trying to get some revenge after all the bad shit that happened to him, but it realizes, oh shit, his <laughs> wife is going to die after this as well. <laughs> oh, the poor bastard. This is yeah. Um, it's not a situation you want to be in. It's a it's a good bad, old Jeff. It's a bad. It's he gets a bad deal. This yeah. is a this is one poor deal and. Oh, all right. Anyway, that's enough. <laughs> that's enough. He's Jeff enough. defending. Yeah. He's had enough. Yep. And uh, for you guys that hate on him, just think about how. Yeah. Bad just he stop and think just about just poor old moment. Jeff. All right. Because uh, I I've always been on the side that's like, well, he's, I don't know. <laughs> poor Jeff is all I'll say. <laughs> poor old Jeff. <laughs> Number oh. two, we have Doctor Gordon is an apprentice. Saw three D. Okay. <laughs> this is a big twist. This is a big twist, all right. I don't know if it's a, a, a great twist, but, <laughs> but it's a big twist. It is a big twist. Uh, I'll just start off by saying this moment is pure fan service. Yeah. Pure and complete fan surf- service. And that's why I think I love it so much. I don't necessarily think it makes a lot of sense, but let's be <laughs> honest, there's not much in the Saw franchise that does make a lot of sense. This one um, makes no sense. It really doesn't make a lot of sense at all. And I think yeah. that they can definitely start making it make sense in a, in a film if they do decide to bring old Carrie always back. Um, but an amazing moment, even though it's not the most logical. I would say. Yeah, look, this is... I think a lot of people are split down the middle with this. They love it. They're like, oh, I can see it coming. He was at that survivor meeting, this, this, this. Look, he was somebody who was tormented heavily by Jigsaw. You know, he lost his foot. His family who were abused and taken prisoner and probably now have left him. His whole life was ruined by Jigsaw. And so he turns around and goes, eh, I'll go work for that guy. Yeah. You yeah. know? Uh, well, you what know. else has he got left? He's got nothing left. <laughs> doesn't have a foot, doesn't have a family. <laughs> he might as well start working for the bad guy. No foot, no family. You become an apprentice. <laughs> um, yeah, it's, look, and that's the thing, right? But uh, maybe it is just straight up Stockholm Syndrome. I don't know. Um, a great reveal. I didn't see it coming purely because I was like, why would, he, why would he side with the guy that's ruined his life? But a big reveal at that, you know, yeah. and we do love Dr. Gordon. So, yeah, absolutely. It, you know, any excuse to bring him back, I suppose, is like, you know, why they have the twist in here. Mm-hmm. And uh, look at that, you know, just due to that fact, we love it. Fantastic. Yep. Fantastic twist. Deserves to be in the top three, at least. I think it's great. Mm. I can't wait to see, hopefully, whether they expand on it in the future or not. That's right. If we get some more Dr. Gordon in the future sequels, uh, we will not complain. No, definitely We don't not. care what they make him do. 
Just uh, make him do headstands and any crazy shit. I don't care. Just put him in the movie. I really don't care. Yeah. If it makes sense or it doesn't, we want more Dr. Gordon. Absolutely. Give it to us as much as you can. And that brings us to number one. The lucky last. The biggest twist in the entire Saw franchise. And this one, I'm sure you guys will actually guess. You guys never guess our number ones. But this <laughs> time, I think you'll actually guess you'll it. You'll actually guess it. It's not a trick. It is number one. The dead body is Jigsaw from Saw 2004. The ultimate iconic number one twist of the entire Saw franchise. How could we end this video without having the twist that started it all? There's no way. There is no other way to end a top list of twists in the Saw franchise except for one way, and that is the moment that John Kramer gets up off that bloody bathroom floor and reveals he's still alive. I don't think that I will ever be sick of this scene. Like, I think that it will have the same impact every single time I watch it. The chills, the oh crap. <laughs> Seeing Adam's face when he, he knows that the body so on the well floor is, is not a body. It's so well performed. The music makes its first debut. Like, it's incredible. It is the Hello Zep moment. It is. Uh, when you think of the Zep music, it is the moment... John Kramer, oh, such a beautiful scene, such a beautiful moment played out by Lee Whannell as Adam screaming out. So, not just him getting up, but Lee Whannell as Adam screaming with his hand out is so iconic. It's burnt into everyone's It's burnt. Brain. Everyone could just close their eyes and think of just Adam's face. It's so good. And of course, not only that, but the iconic delivery of Game Over right yeah. after he wakes up. Everything here was building to this in this first film, and it built, obviously, a 10-year-long, billion-dollar franchise. Uh, it is the number one twist. Absolutely. Uh, I could not put be. a single twist in the whole franchise above this one. No, it's impossible. It is just every single time it does not lose its impact. I love it so much. Everything builds upon this moment mm -hmm. in the franchise. And will we even have a Saw franchise without this exact twist? No. Probably not. Probably not. I don't see it happening. You know, I think that every movie from here on out has felt the pressure of the Zep twist oh, yeah, on its, on its shoulders sure, after sure. this happened. And the franchise has held up pretty well. We've, mm -hmm. we've really been able to be given more twists than probably any other film franchise in history. Definitely. I, you I know, mean, you've got to look at one. it like Saw 10. Like the franchise is more alive than ever. More alive than ever, but also still delivering more twists than ever as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, look, we're super excited for Saw 11 and what they have in store twist-wise for us. They, they never disappoint. Um, but yeah, the list of twists is longer than my arm. It just it goes and goes and goes. And this is the one that, uh, that built it all. It is the, literally... Uh, the, the brick and mortar of twists uh, for sure. So fantastic. Obviously, like we said, there were a number of ones that we had to cut from this list because there are so many. Uh, definitely let us know which ones we missed out that we had to cut that were your favorite twists. And if you agree with the list, let us know. As always, there's plenty of people that have disagreed, I'm sure. So let yeah, us know for sure as well. <laughs> But yeah, write down your favorite twist. We always, uh, we love reading the comments. So definitely uh, let us know and we'll see you in the next video. See you next time, guys. Game over. Ah!